Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sudhavati from Team LemoYS. Today we have Dr. Kirita Ranjani, an OGCM, to share about uh, uterine fibroid. Uh, let us hear a few introduction about MAM. Hello, oh, good afternoon everyone. Myself, Dr. Kirita Ranjani. I am working uh, as a consultant at uh, Chirinar Hospital, Parapakam. I did my UG at Tanjore Medical College and PG at Stanley. Uh, and I have five to six years of experience in this field. Let us get into the topic, ma'am. Uh, yeah, what sure. is uterine fibroid, ma'am? Fibroid, otherwise known as myoma, or leiomyoma means it's a muscular growth from the myometrium that is one of the layer of the uterus uterus is lined by three layers innermost layer is called the endometrium and the next thick muscular layer is known as the myometrium then the outermost layer is perimetrium fibroid is nothing but the muscular growth from the central part that is known as myometrium no? middle layer it arises from the myometrium it arises from the single muscle cell which is monoclonal proliferation it, there will be a growth uh, from the single muscle cell and uh, it will grow from a sing, uh, small uh, pea size to a big uh, uh, around 20 centimeters Okay. So it's not with a benign condition. It's not a cancerous condition. It is a benign condition, but it has to be followed up and uh, intervened properly. Okay. So what is the usual onset of uh, fibroid uterus, ma'am? Like if you see, you no know, fibroids are very rare before the puberty. That means before you attain menarche, fibroids are very rare, and after menopause also fibroids are there. So it is uh, identified that as per the articles, fibroids are hormonal dependent. Only during that reproductive age group where your hormones are high, like estrogen. Process, the stones are high, that time the fibroid tend to grow, increase in size and it will present with the symptoms like menstrual bleeding, everything. So only during this age group, after the puberty and before the menopause, the fibroids are uh, growing in size and it is rare in the extremes of group. So its onset is around 30 to 40 years of age and uh, it is around 6 to 7 percentage in the age group of 30 to 40. And between uh, 40 to uh, 55 like that, it is around 60 percentage. And it, is, it uh, tends to uh, decrease in size to menopause and nearing menopause. So what are all the clinical signs and clinical presentation of uh, fibroid uterus? Ma'am? So fibroid, uh, the symptoms uh, depend upon the age group. And uh, when it is nearing like uh, 25 to 30 years, they usually present with infertility. Mm -hmm. uh, with, and uh, in the menopausal age group, after the menopause, just a notice of fibroid will be there and there are much, no much symptoms. Uh, it will regress after menopause. The symptoms are very less. Mm -hmm. And 75 percentage of the fibroids are asymptomatic. That is without any symptom. Okay. The main uh, symptom of the fibroid is a menstrual bleeding. Okay. It may be a regular menstrual bleeding with a heavy flow. Okay. Like we will say menorrhagia. It means the periods will be regular. It will come every 28 days. But the flow will be high. You will be changing around 10 pads per day with clots. And you will land up in anemia that is decreased hemoglobin because of the heavy bleeding. You may require transfusion. So this is a menorrhagia. Coming to the irregular menses. Means your periods will occur every 15 days once. It will be heavy. So it can be a regular heavy bleeding or irregular. Okay. And it may occur also in the between the men's menstrual cycle that is metrorrhagia uh, between your menstrual cycle if there is any submucosal fibroid or polyp you will get a intermenstrual bleeding Okay. The second most common symptom is the uh, lower abdominal pain or low backache. And um, it may present with uh, lump like mass abdomen. Uh, you may feel a lump within your uh, abdomen and uh, it will be growing outside of the uterus and it will grow a uh, big in size. In that case, you will feel the lump per abdomen. And it may present with infertility as I told you earlier. And if the fibroid is located on the cervix, it may compress the urinary bladder inferent. In that case, you will get the urinary retention. Sometimes it may uh, obstruct the the ureter causing uh, ureteric dilatation, hydrourethral nephrosis, and if it compresses the rectum, which is behind the uterus, if there is a posterior wall fibroid, it may compress the rectum behind, causing the constipation. These are all the pressure symptoms. Mm -hmm. In the rare case, like one to two percentage, it may develop into leiomyosarcoma, which is a cancerous condition arising from the fibroid. Okay. So these are the symptoms of the fibroid. Okay, ma'am. So you have nicely explained. So as you said, it will interfere pregnancy also. Yes. Yeah, definitely. All the treatment available for fibroid uterus and what all the prevention can be taken. Okay. Before that, I wanted to explain what are the interventions, how it disturbs the pregnancy. If pregnancy means we will classify the pregnancy, those nine months into three periods, like first trimester ending with 12-14 weeks, then the second trimester up to the seventh month, then the third trimester from the eighth to the tenth month. So in this first trimester, in the first three months, if there is any fibroid, it may cause mild bleeding, pain, or sometimes it 
may land up in miscarriages because of implantation uh, difficulty there will be a uh, what to say intervention in the vascular supply between the fibroid and the gestational sac so the implantation will be a difficult one it will lead to miscarriages and um, in the second trimester between the 5th to 7th month it may cause red degeneration it is one of the complication of the fibroid where the fibroid uh, in the periphery of the fibroid outer surface of the fibroid there will be a tiny blood vessels like in there is if there is any thrombosis or obstruction in this venous vessels what will happen there will be a necrosis of the fibroid infection of the fibroid in that case the patient uh, pregnant patient will present with ab- abdominal pain so it is not a serious issue just analgesic bedrest and conservative management is enough for this mm-hmm. so uh, in the third trimester there will be a preterm occur and the labor may initiate early then uh, there will be mal presentation because of the location of the fibroid in the lower uh, cervix or uh, lower segment and there may be placental abruption there will be premature separation of the placenta because of the fibroid location or it will obstruct the birth canal mandating uh, sometimes uh, it will increase the odds of having cesarean section because mm-hmm. if it obstructs the birth canal no the baby cannot come out of mm-hmm. so what will happen uh, more amount of cesarean section is needed in this case okay uh, cesarean section no uh, mostly we will advise not to remove the fibroids because uh, it has so much tendency to bleed so it will end up in hemorrhage so we will avoid removing the fibroid during the cesarean section people may think that it is a single surgery why can't you remove the fibroid at the same city but it is not advisable to remove the fibroid if it is pedunculated coming out from the uterus it is okay but if it is intramural it's better uh, we should not touch it and it has uh, more tendency to bleed the uterus won't shrink after the delivery of the baby so it may cause postpartum hemorrhage also so it is advisable to follow up and intervene postpartum period in the postpartum okay so uh, mm-hmm. what are all the investigations available to identify uterine fibroid the investigations uh, uh, generally if the patient coming with uh, heavy menstrual bleeding we are suspecting it means we will rule out pregnancy t- uh, pregnancy with doing a urine pregnancy test and uh, we will do a common complete hemogram and basic investigations to uh, rule out other uh, uh, infections and uh, we will do a definitive uh, investigation that is an ultrasonogram it will be done either trans abdominally or from below trans okay al- abdomen and pelvis then uh, we will do hysteroscopy to diagnose any polyp or submucosal fibroid in the same sitting when we are doing diagnostic hysteroscopy we can remove the fibroid that is therapeutic uh, we can remove the polyp also uh, mm, that is the by hysteroscopy that is one of the investigation then if you want to map the fibroids or locate the fibroid means then uh, the best investigation mri that is called mapping mri mapping see how many fibroids are there so mri uh, other thing and uh, hsg is there hsg is hysterosarcinogram in this we will inject the dye through the cervix and uh, see for uh, cavity and the patterns of the fallopian tubes in case if the fibroid is within the cavity or submucosal fibroid we can uh, pick it uh, from the uh, hsg that is an x ray taken to evaluate infertility that time also we can identify so these are the investigations so, uh, most of the times uh, the abdominal ultrasonogram and pelvis uh, ultrasonogram it will be combined with uh, doppler color doctor to know the vascularity of the fibroids yeah thank you ma'am